Savior Jesus Christ. And I bring you fresh greetings from a dear Iranian brother in Athens, working for the Lord there, Jihad. And uh, he said, greets all the believers in my name. Another greeting that was last night. Another greeting this morning from Lebanon. And I had the message, Happy Shahnini. You don't know what is Shahnini. Well, it came from the word Hoshana, which translates into English as Hosanna. So, Happy Hosanna. The triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. This is what we celebrate in the Christian dawn today. And we celebrate it very well in the Middle East. I've been in Egypt a few times during the Hoshana, and uh, Christians would go in the streets with a palm tree, uh, as you do that in other parts, yes. And it is beautiful. In the Lebanon and Syria, I've been there as well. It is completely, I mean not completely, but it is different because uh, we have the children nicely dressed and uh, the priest and uh, uh, Christians would parade with candle. So, not, we don't have many palm trees around like in Egypt, so with pandas. It is wonderful uh, commemorating that. Well, my message this morning is not far from what was happening. And it is from a book that our Jewish friends read during the Passover celebration. So next week will be the Passover, and then we have the Passover Sunday. But today we are commemorating the 11th of Nisan in the Jewish calendar. And whichever day that comes, still they celebrate that uh, according to the date, not to the day. Shall we have a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. So, beyond the Haggadah, if you are familiar with the Jewish tradition for the Passover celebration, they used to read the Song of Songs. It is a book in the Holy Scriptures that had received more criticism than any other book. In Hebrew, it is Sher Hashirim, what we read in the first verse, Sher Hashirim, Asher Shlomo, for Solomon. Whether, like the Psalms we read to Benny Korah, either written by Benny Korah, who were the singers, or written for them. So, this is the same. Yet, it is a book profoundly appreciated by many Jews and Christians alike. It was the first book I have ever read in the whole Bible. 1969, it was published by an art publishing house in Beirut. And Yusuf Al-Fal, Mr. Yusuf Al-Fal, advised me to read it, that it is something I will enjoy. And I have enjoyed it. I cannot understand Christians who would see, like our Muslim friends, pornography in the book, or sex in that book, because I never thought of it as such, even as a Muslim. I never took it as such. 
My mom used to write Sufi, if you understand the Sufi poetry. And in the in Sufism there is big room for addressing the divine in a loving manner, flirting. One of her favorite was Sana Batlayla Minni Al Abla Kultu Ya Layla Ya Layla Irham Al Qatla Layla is a figure equivalent to Juliet in the English British term of Shakespeare. Captivated my mind. I have said Layla have mercy with the dead, etc. So it is flirting, but with a different connotation. So maybe at the time I thought of the Song of Songs in that manner. It starts with, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy heart is better than wine, because of the savour of thy good ointment. Thy name is an ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. I am black and comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. At the tents of Kedar, at the curtains of Solomon. I would like to say about herself such word. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. Not bad me, because she was protected. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of their vineyards. But my own vineyards have I not kept. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? If I move to verse 13, the bundle of myrrh is my well beloved unto me. He shall lie all night between my breast. Our Muslim friends were troubled by the breast mentioned in the Song of Songs. Yet, I have never seen one of them with a sexual indication. Here is the first one. And the last one in chapter 8. The bride is wishing that her bridegroom or her lover will be like her brother suckling at her mother's breast. There is nothing sexual about it. And here it is the same. A bundle of myrrh is my well beloved unto me. He shall lie all nights between my breast. A bundle of myrrh. And that will take me to link it to chapter 5 when the beloved girl, Shlomit, is asleep. But her heart is awake. I sleep, but my heart is waketh. It is the voice of my beloved. That knock and saying, Open to me, my sister, my beloved, my dove, my perfect one. Here it says, The one that is not defied. But the, I wish. I could transmit the Hebrew poetic, beautiful language, the eloquence there, with a rhyming. So, my sister, Uhti, my dove, Yonati, Talmati, my perfect one. You know the word from the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. He was Ta and upright, Yasher. He was perfect and upright. And here in verse 
one appears to addressing her in those words. So the relationship is a pure relationship. Open to meet my sister. Yes, beloved sister. They were not into a physical relationship yet. I could consent in the court of justice for the innocence of this girl. Even though some people are troubled by the language. I arose, verse 5. She was slacking to get up and open. I am taking off my garments. Shall I put them again? I washed my feet. Shall I dirty them again? We understand the culture, the, the, the soil uh, that would make it inconvenient. And then verse 5, I rose up, open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with mer, and my fingers with sweet smelling mer upon the handles of the lock. How did that happen? There we have the the sachet sort of mer, cluster of mer between her breast. Here, when she went to get up, rose to open the door, her hands were dripping mer. Where did this mer come from? An aromatherapist by profession, once upon the time I studied holistic therapy, and part of it was the essential oils, and uh, I have made 12 to 14 apologetic episodes on YouTube about the Song of Solomon. And there I had to uh, get myself an, an illustration. And the illustration was my gate. So I went out to my gate and first positioned the camera there. So if you go to YouTube and watch some of these, I opened the gate from outside put my hand thrust through the hole in the gate, opened and closed it again and departed. Now in the field of uh, aromatherapy, I've been commissioned, I've paid, been paid for to make a research about stacting. It is not a time to go through the scripture. The incenses used in the temples in the past with a blend of different spices, including mere frankincense and other spices. And where did this material came from? From Yemen. And we know the story of the Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon, spending all this time. <coughs> Kings and queens used to have perfumery. They used to have the laboratory, uh, in the sense of what we call today laboratory, to mix and blend what can be synergic, what can fit together of these spices. So Solomon had this knowledge. He had these materials and he would be working I have visited uh, Almira in Syria, visited a number of times, but one of them I took shots around and was published in English in the Aroma, uh, Aromatica magazine. Quite lengthy article, but there the Queen Zenobia in Palmyra had the same thing. So here's the king coming at night after working with uh, these spices, coming to visit his uh, lover, his beloved, thrusting his hand through the door, his hands were all the day working with the mirror and frankincense and all these spices, his hands were open. I demonstrated I have one like that, like little stone, but it is pretty fragile, of mirror and frankincense. I demonstrated that. Just, this is a residue, what I have is a residue after distillation. This residue would have the smell still the aroma so strong. Just holding it for the whole day, my hand would smell of mer. And if the king came, thrust his hand through the hole 
in the door to open and then he departed. Don't blame me if I remember. Another one who was standing at the door but did not force himself. King Solomon as a king could have forced himself. He's a king. But he was so gentle. He departed. And our dear Lord in the book of Revelation we read, I'm standing at the door and knocking. If you open the door and let him in, he will come in. He did not force himself. And this is the image here. And what do we do with these residues? As practitioners, we don't throw them away. We put them in small sachet. Up to date, they can't be used. And what would happen? The lady will take that and put it between her breast. Verse 13, a bundle of mirror is my well beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breast. My mom used to tell me you are in my heart. We have, ladies and gentlemen, have uh, tendons that would open and you put a photo of a loved one in it, don't we? I have one with a verse from the scripture, a silver one from Damascus. So here we have the image. The bundle of mer is my beloved to me and be my priest. Dwelleth. Another one, verse 3, can you think of a lover, a girl, that would entice others to follow her, to her beloved? Because of the savour of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore the virgins love thee. And later we say, draw me to you, and uh, we will run after thee. We, as a group, who will do that? Unless there is a divine element certainly behind these words. Even when it seems very carnal down to the flesh, those who are looking for the flesh, the flesh is on the table. But those with a heart for God can see the divine elements as well. The word version there, let me do some apology, uh, is anamot. I have translated, actually, I, last year I finished translating the Song of Songs into both Arabic and English for a book on the subject, the royal love. What will happen when we get the attack? That you have different Bible, our friends would say, you have different Bible, the church will bring you a Bible every three months. And there are versions, there is, doesn't say versions for girls, young girl. Would that be sh shaking us? No way. No way. The original word there in the Masoretic text is Alamut. Alamut or Alma. Alma is a young girl. So young girls. Exactly like the prophecy in Isaiah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I am no hell. God is with us. Alma. The Septuagint, the mid of the third century BCE, or before Christ, before the Christian era, I put it, era. 
of God's relationship with his people as a husband to wife. I remember the days of when I would trust you in the wilderness, walking in the wilderness. The image in Ezekiel chapter 16, I passed by you after the first passing the second time, and your time was a time of love. And coming to the New Testament, I will trust, trust you to one man to present a holy, sanctified version to Christ. What St. Paul was saying, and that is us. This can be a foreshadow of what we are, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our friends, the Jewish friends, accepted after a lot of debates. Rabbi uh, Akiva ben Yusuf said, nothing worth the day. The Song of Songs was given to Israel. So, it is part of God's holy scripture. We take it as such. And we bless God for his word. Thank you. I did not go through my book because I found I put 44 verses from the Song of Songs. Only I counted yesterday uh, in my book published in Morocco uh, with a meditation on the first verse only. Few pages just on the first verse. That impress me. Uh, in my translation, I put it, kiss me very badly. For your love is superior to mine. The reason for the word superior, not better of, because the, the, the Hebrew language is a plural, tobim. Todecha tobim meyayim. Tobim is a plural of good. So we don't have the word plural like goods. I found superior is better. Certainly I cried over some verses. Translation, God's word is not a easy subject. Whichever book, God's word is very, very, I said. It's the truth for us today.